Okay, people, come in, come in. I hope there's some people waiting outside, but okay. Um, welcome to my little presentation around this um, new exciting thing called HTML5S. Um, this session was named about six months ago when the um, iPhone 4S just came out, so at that point I thought this was, this was pretty funny. Not that many people get that joke anymore, that's, but that's just too bad. So um, let's, um, let's, let's start with a fair warning. First of all, um, I'm a Dane, and, and that means that uh, we by definitions are Vikings, and if you come from Copenhagen, it's even worse. You're Viking sailors kind of thingy. Um, that will probably mean that I'm gonna maybe curse a bit in this session at some given points. Um, I maybe even say things that will be offensive to Americans. Um, I will definitely say things that will be offensive to developers. Um, so just to make sure that people know this, and now this is a given fair warning, um, afterwards, if you think I was a real asshole, come up and tell me it so I can maybe change my style for another time. Um, that was just uh, that fair, fair warning. So this is me. This is my Twitter handle. This is my name because my normal Danish name is so long it cannot even be standing on my, my Visa card, right? So modern decay, it's way, way simpler. And this is also like the, the say your daily doses of Drupal truth. This is what this is. So follow me on Twitter and learn stuff. So first of all, my favorite color is badass. I'm a straight up front end designer. I have a thing for the Pagas, which is dumb, and it took me, it was hard this year. I mean, did we wait for that game for three months? And they just did nothing. So, anyways, I'm a front end developer. I've been in this Drupal community for just figuring out six years now, uh, since the um, DrupalCon down in Brussels. It has been a ride. It has been very, very fun to be a front end dude in a back end world. Um, the good thing is there's getting more and more of us, and apparently they're giving me a room the size of a hangar. So um, apparently we're getting more people, all people just coming in to see me talk and do crazy things. So I'm running this little company called Geek Royale, and yeah, that's the stickers. And I have them with me, actually. So if you want to get stickers afterwards, you have to come up and be nice. <laughs> that's, that's how the rules are. So, but first off, first off, um, this is not anything about microformats, or drag and drop, and how to build apps, and all this <laughs> magic new thingies, right? <laughs> Nothing about that, no offline storage, no geolocation, none of that. This is about what will happen with the front end, the markup, when we, as front end developers, work with that. So if you wanted to see that, probably came to the wrong session. This is straight up about getting some fundamentals right now. Um, actually making the whole HTML5 thing less sexy, which I think I know that we're all hyped up of, of it and it's so great and yada, 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 but it's pretty simple actually. Um, and we're probably gonna work around this word a lot. It's all about the code. Um, so good to see there's still somebody left in the room. Dark Ryan is not yet getting his heart attack. It seems like that. So, um, so just let me just figure out who's who in this room. So, and now you're allowed to speak up. In my sessions, you're allowed to shout. You're allowed to scream at me. You're allowed to call me out on shitty code. So, uh, developers, anyone? Okay, good. Front end heroes. Ah, uh, come on. Come on. Fuck yeah. Designers. Okay, the ladies, <laughs> the fellas. Okay, that was like 30%, 70, right? That's pretty good, it's getting better and better. Um, okay, how many is just here for the show to figure out if I'm gonna offend someone? <laughs> Crap. Crap, okay. So, HTML4S, what's that about? What's all the cool stuff that we were promised? Well, basically, I, I sat down and tried to think about it a little bit and looked at how the front end have kind of progressed a couple of years. And well, back in 2008, around Drupal 6, we went all, oh, it's gonna be grid systems. Mark Bolton came along and pushed that in on, into us and we you know, worked around that. 
So, last two years ago, you no, know, we get in Drupal 7 in, and suddenly now people begin to talk about responsive and HTML and all these things. Um, and we're kind of waiting for that Drupal 8 thing to come. There's a lot of work going on right now around the Drupal 8, HTML5, CSS3 um, design group. I need to take a break up there. Yeah. Um, no, so I kind of see yourself as being like kind of there right now. Um, we don't know when Drupal 8 is going to come out, when it's done, right? Um, so we can either be stuck in our normal markup ways as we have now, or we can kind of like get some tempo on. Um, and that's what actually what this is all about. So the first thing that you actually want to do in your theme, this is all about you know, quickly build a basic theme for you that can kind of do that whole HTML5 thingy. The place um, where it's actually happening is um, you need to look for this actually a little bit. That, this freaked me out the first time. I had this whole way of the Drupal 8, Drupal 7 is building stuff up. So you have, the, you have that whole wrapper HTML TPL file thingy. Well, Go down into the systems, you see the, the module systems, and there it is, and copy that file to your, to your theme, because else you cannot really get on the train with HTML5, unless, of course, you're using Eric's fabulous module, which kind of says HTML5 to kind of like preload it all for you. Um, but this is also about like doing things in hand. Um, so this was basically taken, this is the, this is the basic markup header we have in, in um, Drupal 7 now. So you just actually take that and you kind of just shift it out with this. And this is actually all that HTML5 is about, cleaning up the crap. I mean, what do you like? <laughs> really, I mean, it's, it's, I know that probably a lot of Drupal developers would really like the top one because there's so much data in it and data is good, right? I'm a, I'm a simple man. I like rock and roll and big ass beers, right? I like the small things. So, it's actually this one, this is the dog type. This is where it's at. This is actually where we go fist pump. When that thing is in, like, yeah, yeah. But, of course there's a but. We had this one last year. Microsoft said, finally, sorry for E6. Probably my greatest achievement ever in my life. I have this framed up at home. Um, I was hoping for an IE7 kind of, we're killing it now. That didn't, didn't happen. Okay, well, the good thing is that, that the big one, the big corner, Mr. Dries, um, has actually told us that IE7 is not gonna be supported now in Drupal 8. Um, uh, that, that, in my mind, is a fantastic thing. It, been a, it has been a battle for a lot of months in the issue queue, let me put it that way. And the reason we're doing this now is that Drupal 8 is gonna be out in what? A year and a half from now, at that point, IE7 will be dead. We still, yeah, we still have to support it. I'm actually taxing my clients now. Well, I'm a Dane, so we tax on everything, right? So I put in the IE7 tax. I used to have an IE6 tax, and it works fabulously. When you put that tax on, the clients go, nah, maybe we don't need to support that anyway. <laughs> that, it worked out. Um, okay, but we still you know, have to work with that. No. IE7 thing, yeah. I know, I just gave Microsoft credit for like being good guys, and this is just to get easy points, right? You know, IE picking, you can always do that. So the whole thing is that, that the problem you have now, you have changed the doc type, and you begin like putting in new tags. Uh, well, IE doesn't get it. It's like, oh, crap. Well, IE9 gets it, so that's a good thing, but we're gonna be stuck with IE8 for a lot of years. So. Um, the really quick and dirty way to actually do this is just taking this snippet and throwing it directly into the HTML GPL file and be done with it. There's a small little piece of code that's gonna kind of tell dumb, 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 dumb browsers that, hey dude, that article tag is now actually a thing you should render into something. Um, okay, so we have now, kind of we have articles with section with figures, we have all that kind of supported. Um, what you should do then is actually throw in a CSS reset at some kind. Um, you can either do that by, Eric Meyer has one. I mean, um, if you're using a uh, normalizer, it has that, that one too. It's, it's kind of all over the place. Um, but, and actually when you've done this, um, you are actually now allowed into the club. This is like, this is a gang. 
there is a gain sign because right now, when you're on, when you're done this to your side, you have straight up plain HTML5. So, and this is a kind of an exercise. If anybody has a big ass wide ass lens, could they pretty please come here? Anyone with a big ass camera? Wide lens, come on. Oh yeah, my roomie from San Francisco. Okay, this is an exercise. So, so, so the normal, the normal gang sign was like, like, like this, right? But this is Drupal, so we need to do it once. So we start out throwing me the horns. Everyone, come on, up with the horns, good. You need to take like three fingers. These three fingers are for the World Wide Web. And you combine these two, right? Come on, guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you can do it. Let's, let's take it as a big one. Come. Oh, yeah, like this. Come on. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. Thank you. Thank you. This was, this was a dream I've been having for a couple of months. I, it, no, it's so dumb. It's dumb, 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 dumb. But now our HTML4S is actually super powered. Right now, your new badass theme is HTML5, and you are one of the cool kids. That was one line of code you changed, and you threw in a little bit of a, little bit of a JavaScript thingy, and you're done. How sweet is that? So, now the whole thing is actually to getting this stuff into Drupal in some way. And, and if you look really quick on how an HTML5 page is built up, you have like kind of new, new tags that kind of interesting. You have a header, you have a footer, you have an article. Um, and you have another footer. Like, why are the two footers? Like, eh, 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 we're gonna come to that, no worries. Relax, you're a developer, I know, it's not so hard. It's good, it's good, and we have a section and arts and stuff, and there's probably errors in this, and there's probably gonna come people that can't come after me, and that's totally okay. So, the great thing about this header and footer thing, normally in Drupal, we have had it based as IDs, right? You have ID header in your div. So, like, set in stone. Well, we're still having that. We're just using these real roles. And, and the sweet thing is that you have the, the header check. Header role banner, okay. In your CSS now, because it's HTML5. When is that? So check out the CSS picking. Give them the header, that's the role banner. Done. You don't need to use IDs anymore. You can rip out those IDs. And believe me, it feels good. If you feel any way the way I feel like markup, well, and I have kind of a, a relationship with Markov. Let me put it that way. Um, then this is really, really nice, actually. Um, same thing when we come around and, and actually do the same thing, thing with the footer. And it kind of now begins kind of, ah, see here. The idea is it, this is easy. This is nice to work with. This is not filled up with diffs, with diffs, with diffs in, and a shit ton of IDs. Um, another thing we have in Drupal is the blocks. Um, the thing is that normally what we do in Drupal is like, Everything is like based around this idea that this is a system. Um, when we begin to really work with HTML5, the, the sweet thing about it is actually that each kind of piece of content has a meaning. There's actually real semantics in it. Not the, oh no, you cannot put a span around the div kind of thing, but actually you give your markup meaning. So now you actually you have to use your head. So basically it cannot be defined just by a CMS system. We actually need to go in and begin to work around the blocks and figure out what that should, should do. And when I first figured this shit out, I got freaked out because, okay, I knew what an article was, and I kind of had an idea of a section, but a site that was kind of all over the place. And I actually talked with, um, um, oh crap, another high-end developing guy, um, that, that about this whole thing about the site, and he was like, yeah, I still haven't figured it out yet. Okay, okay good. We're just gonna learn as we go along. And that's actually the other thing. We're still learning as we go along. Um, so the thing is actually it's the bind by the content. That's the whole thing. Um, another thing around these blocks, if we have to take a new sweet little thing we get in, uh, the nav element, that's basically that you're telling your markup, hey, you are a navigation, you are a menu. I'm still kind of like, what did they, they just not call it a menu? But then again, I don't care. They just give me the tools and I'm gonna use them. Um, but the thing you do here is actually basically, uh, you do a new block dash dash menu GPL PSP. That one will override the one that comes from the system. And you basically just change the div to a nav instead and give it role navigation. Now those whole rear roles does something wonderful that I'm still 
haven't really figured out because I'm all for the design. But it's a lot of accessibility in it, and other people will tell you about this later. Um, this is yet another one of these small things where we need to go in and kind of fiddle it with doable and put that into a theme. At some point, you want to build a new base theme, and of course, I'm going to tell, tell you about that too. It's going to come a little bit later. But let's take the article. It's actually really interesting. This is the definition for an article. Component of a page, independent, distributable, post, article, blog entry, comment, widget, independent item. If this is not a note, I don't know what is. But this is kind of, it's straight out of the Drupal manual. Like, that's an article. So that's another thing. We can kind of start there. Remember that I said about the footer thing? So this is basically like a, this would be a, 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 a basic note TPO. So you have an article, you have that as a role as an article, you have a header, you have that footer thing. So see the footer when you have that into an article? That's more like, um, you know, all the me me meta, 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 meta data, right? So just think about it as that way and then you're not gonna use your little pretty head for thinking about that anymore. Then. See, and as you can see, I have not used my pretty little head very much. But, and that actually gives us now, oh, holy crap, there's some code, right? This is my basic uh, uh, node GPL. As you can see, there's actually not that much changed, but the amount of kind of like, I actually have a div class content down there, and I know that's bad, but it, it works. Um, the whole idea here is actually just know, I just go in slowly and change stuff as I learn and as I go along to not make this whole HTML5 thing dangerous. I mean, I started back in 96, Netscape 2 oh, just came out, and we did table-based designs with spacer gifs and all that sexy shit, right? How many, how many of you were there? You feel my pain, right? That was good times. We knew how to get stuff done. Can you remember what happened when we went from, from table-based designs to using divs instead? I had IDs all the fuck over, and I had class names of anything. It was like, it was like watching, watching a Drupal theme drunk. It was awful. I just opened up a, a, a site I did back in 2001. Whoa, holy, holy crap. And I'm standing up here bitching about markup. Are you kidding me? Um, no, but the thing was that, that when we changed that whole idea and attitude and kind of thinking of how, how the markup should be to get the design to Put, put the design into your theme, that was pretty hard because we had no idea where to go. I mean, for how long have people now done HTML5 sites? A year? Year and a half, something? Well, we just have to learn slowly and get it on and get it on and get it on. It's not like, this is not gonna be changed in one day. I mean, we're not even sure of all the, all the tags yet, what they mean. I mean, we had the time tag that went out of the out of these specs and went in again over a course of two weeks. Then it's beginning a pretty, pretty hard as a badass front, front end developer to be like up on, up on everything. Um, okay, so now we have like the basic stuff done, right? We have the node, we have an article, we have all the, the things. Um, Drupal still has this idea of diffs for everything because it's a system, right? It's a, some, some very clever people have sat down and tried to figure out how to build this stuff and how to everything can like be built on a system. Fair enough. Um, the problem is kind of that this is how everything you know, we, we want to come in and, and work with, it's kind of like we need to peel all, all these layers. I mean, in, in my head, it's sometimes begins to feel like a little bit uh, like a chastity belt. I mean, I want to get in to get, the, to get to the good stuff, right? And I you know, it's like layers and layers and layers and layers of stuff. And I, I think that the idea around um, Drupal and the way that we do feels, it's kind of like the, the idea that, okay, this is, a, this is an onion, so you can just like peel everything off slowly and slowly, instead in the node monkeys to do that, right? Um, but if you don't need all that stuff, if you actually want to do your markup clean, you can actually, it's, it's pretty simple to get a lot of it done. I just want to run through like three or four different ways of doing it. So, yeah, we're keel holding the fucker. Um, the thing is that how many of you are actually working with the TPL files, like field TPL or field content type TPL? Okay, the rest of you, go home and figure out that, search for the field TPL in the system. That is actually that piece of thingy that will change the way that your fields are rendered. 
Um, and that's the kind of the quick and easy way to actually get this, this done. So if you want to change how, let's say, an image always get, gets shown, I don't want to have anything around my image. I just need to have my image, nothing else. Well, you can go in and remove that, put that in your theme, and that will slowly work. Um, another thing is, is actually use the uh, theme function and putting in the new theme function and register that into the node TPL. It's kind of complicated, but not that bad. And of course, using if you are lazy like me sometimes, um, the Space Suite has a ton of tools to really clean this stuff up. Um, so um, this is my node diff theme kind of thingy, just to like really quick show what it is that I'm doing. So if if you're in a node TPL, you, you do like content, the field name, and do that hashtag theme thing, now you're actually calling a new theme function to render whatever that element is. So the field name is now being rendered with a new, um, a new theme function. So when the new theme function is down here, it's called no markup, because hey, I just want to have the, the basic content out of it, nothing else. And you just you know, put in this little function. This is what I figured out, this is called development. And I got a bit scared, just a tiny bit scared, but then again, I can go back to my ways of just wanting to do everything like on a visual level instead. So this is, um, this is the Space Suite's way of doing it. Uh, I made a field called Hell Yeah. Um, and as you can see in the markup down here, we have a H group around it. We have a div class, some kind of div class. Actually in HTML5, it's perfectly okay to use a div and a span. It's not illegal, it's okay. But, um, so as you can see, it's like really actually easy to put in the things I want to have in my site, in that area. Um, you could just do it through an UI. This is, by the way, also a really good thing. If you, if you have a kind of a pissy client who want to move everything around, you can kind of give them access to the display suite and they can kind of move the fields around and being dumb about that. It's, um, it's pretty sweet, actually. Uh, and you should definitely go and check it out. Unfortunately, Svensl, who did it, uh, is not here. Um, else I would have made a big call out to him and getting him a, a lot of love for the work he's put in. He has heard on me on a day-to-day -day basis, bitching and moaning about how I want to have this stuff done. So he did that. I'm very, very happy for that. Um, another thing, actually, now, we've, now we have the field. If you have a view that does this instead, well, views has, I made, a, I made a badge a couple of years ago that says views need more diffs. That was, I still have some of them left at home. Uh, we never got around to do the t-shirt. And Earl will be the first to get it, of course. Um, no, so now in, in views, actually, we have semantic views, which is goddamn awesome. Um, but actually, some of this stuff actually came into views. So if, if you're getting tired of that views, wait, like kind of put out all oh, these diffs again, there's a simple little button you can just like remove. Provide default field wrapper elements. I would love if it, if it was the other way around. But then again, as long as, um, as, long as you can make it to work, it's all good with me. Mm. All right, so the thing is actually that, that Earl is, is actually listening to what, what you know, front end people were actually doing. And, and we have talked a lot of back and forth about what it is that we want to have. And that's another thing that I kind of hope that we can get more front end nerds that are kind of like into all this markup and design implementation, all these things, can get them into this and actually talk with the developers. Because developers don't really hate us, because we have a function. We keep the designers the fuck away from their working ground, right? <laughs> I mean, well, that is basically what a theme is. That's that hot love making between markup and design. Like, did I just do that? Oh, oh fuck you, Morton. <laughs> that, by the way, is the real Morton. Uh, another thing you can do here, and uh, again, the HTML5 tools module is a thing you want to download, is it actually has this um, very, very sweet little thing that you can go in and say you can, you can take like style settings on each field, and then you can go down, and see, that's a strong, a strong tag. You, oh, can you use that again? Uh, whatever. Um, but you have article on the side, a footer, and header, a menu, and nav. Hooray. I mean, that just gives us a tool right in our hands. We don't even have to do anything about it. I think that's pretty sweet. Um, that's the HTML5 tools. Definitely worth a download. Um, and actually, the thing is kind of that, what is that, what will do will do the day that the world runs out of diffs? <laughs> Seriously. Um, every time I hear people really bitch and moan about a new CMS system that they work with, and if they come from a hand coding background, it's probably doable. There's a reason for that, and well, we can make it better, and we are making it better, so that's all good. Uh, I just need to check how much time 
as you got. Oh crap, I need to speed up a bit. Okay, so uh, another thing that when we begin to work with, with HTML5, there's a lot of new sexy things in the forms. Um, and usually in HTML4, you have to have a div inside of your form. You don't need that anymore. And that made me happy for a whole week. I know it's kind of anal. Maybe it's kind of anal, but and I actually ended up doing this little thing, everything I do now, because I don't want to see that div anywhere. Um, and, and that's actually the thing right now about Drupal Apps. Sometimes this is the kind of things that you need to do. Um, the good thing is that like, a bunch of us who are kind of anal about that stuff, so if you just come by and tap us on the back and say, hey, dude, uh, can you help me out with this? We will be like, oh, yeah, let's see, let's see. Um, we get a ton of new input fields, and a ton of new kind of things that we can do with that. New placeholders, yeah, yeah, it's small. This is actually pretty cool. You know the small tag, right? That was used in way back then. Yeah, that was for small text. In HTML5, it's not that anymore. It's actually more for kind of like um, information around the same elements, which actually make them, if you take this screenshot, this was me getting very pissy one day and thought that the Drupal login form was ugly as fuck, and I wanted to do something about it. Um, so what I basically did was actually using the wonderful powers of HTML5 and you know, putting stuff in and actually using these elements as, as good as possible. Um, and this is straight up clean CSS all the way. No JavaScript stuff, no anything else. This leads up to a shameless promotion of the, um, the Drupal Watchdog where there's actually an article about that, how you do that. So I will not do that in this session. You hope for that, but you have to pay for that. Or I will show you because it's pretty, pretty easy. Yeah, or somebody else will show you, or somebody will lend you the magazine. Um, okay, so now we've kind of cleaned up, you know, in the, 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 the markup, and it begins to like look something that's good. Another thing that Drupal has a kind of tendency to um, is the whole loading every CSS file that may be possible in the world, plus a few extra because system has to, and you know, some module you just load it in. Of course, they need to have a changing the colors of your links because that's yeah. That I will not call out the module today. I will do that later at a bar and figure out if the actually the dude who did it is there, and I will have a man-to-man -man talk with him. <laughs> um, so, but apparently this is my claim to fame: uh, the fuck off and die technique. <laughs> uh, and this is just a quick, quick reminder what this is actually is. Um, when you define your style sheets. If you define style sheet that doesn't exist in your theme info file, it will not load it. This is my usual kind of, no, getting this stuff out. If you look at the, the last style sheet, you will maybe see that a style sheet that made all my links blue. Um, the thing is around um, CSS right now is that IE6 is dead, 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 dead. Yeah, uh, yeah actually like, fuck yeah. Um, but we're actually still kind of you know, uh, thinking in ways still as we used to have CSS way back when we have to support IE5 and IE6 and so forth. Um, and now we can, act, we can begin to use a ton of these things. We can use real selectors. And, and as I, again, I can see my time was not really maybe, yeah, bro, kind of running out. Um, it's just, I just have to jump through this really, really quick. So, so this is actually the real, the real shit. Um, if you look at this, you have a class name, and you put, take it on the input and take it on the, on the bottom. This is the stuff we can begin to do now in our CSS. I mean, we can clean out so much stuff from our CSS. That also means we can clean out class names that Drupal has for everything, because that was the only way that we could actually support this stuff way back in IE 5.5 and IE 5 and Firefox 3.6, because that's also a piece of shit. Um, and the whole thing about this is that when you look at how people used to do CSS, how many of you know, know this chart? Print this out and begin to look at it and then begin to look at how Drupal's mark of it is and then go back. Um, the whole thing about having classes and classes and classes and classes, this is a really good kind of reminder of what you should not do and, and why important is so bad. Very, very bad. Um, the thing that we do now around the CSS and the way that well, I see that Drupal thinks about it. Um, I will try not to rant so much about it. Um, we have a CMS system, right? And, and it put out a field, and that field needs to have some kind of hook, because in Drupal, everything is a hook. 
that I th developers like likes hooks, right? You don't like hooks. Do you like hooks? Yeah. Okay, and it, it's nice to have a hook in the CSS, right? It kind of it works the same way. It's good. Yeah, maybe. Um, but why is it? Why are we putting in class names that doesn't make sense? I mean, if I have a image gallery that defines all kinds of sweet stuff around that, and I want to put that into a field somewhere, and I need to get that class name in. Have you ever been sitting on that situation where like, how do I get a class name into that? Well, you use the hook. Oh, yeah, so I'm building my CSS bigger, bigger, and bigger, and bigger. Do you know about uh, Stabonella's uh, OO CSS system? Okay, she, um, she redid the whole of Facebook's um, CSS. She went through it and figured out how many times they had the color blue in it, the, the Facebook color blue, and that's kind of not actually really the same color. The thing is that that's kind of how we do Drupal sites. I mean, we repeat ourselves all over. If I want to have a library of class names that actually makes sense in my head in Drupal, <sighs> it's going to be hard. Um, and that's the, the thing around this is, 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 as I see it as well, this Drupal, it's been a kind of, a, it's a name generating thing, right? It's, it's a hook that we use. And the system at this point is not built for that kind of thinking. And in my mind, that's kind of one of the key problems today. Uh, that, so if you go with these Stubbornellas or CSS or go out and read the smack, uh, smack dot, search for smack CSS. Um, well, the whole idea here is actually to clean, clean it up, make it reusable. I mean, we're, we're trying to make everything else reusable in so many ways. Apparently, the CSS is kind of a dumping ground for bad decisions. Um, and I think that's kind of, a, kind of a sad thing. So there's kind of different ways to actually kill this stuff. Um, um, you can use the fuck off and die method or the foat if people are offended by the word fuck, um, and die in the same sentence. Um, <laughs> I just squeezed that in, right? Or you can use the bad technique. People know what the bad is, right? Oh, come on. Should we? Do I have to do this each year? Okay, so the bad is very, very simple. Is that every module you have is defined with three CSS files. If your module don't come with this, these three and the way that it should be used, I will find you. <laughs> and I will punish you because this is the only way that we as front-end developers can actually work with the CSS. I mean, so the whole idea is that you have a base CSS file. The base CSS file is all the stuff that I should not get my fingers into. So if you have an Ajax call, if you have anything like that, you put that shit up in the base CSS file. If you have anything that you want to put into your admin interface, it goes in there. If I see any admin stuff or Ajax-based stuff that will break your module down the theme CSS file, we will call in the node monkeys. We will s release the hounds. Because this makes it impossible for a theme to work with Drupal. If we have to go every time there's get a new thing installed into that site, and we have to go hunting for it, I mean, how many, how many hours are you guys wasting a day of overriding dumbass CSS that you don't have to use for anything? An hour, 20 minutes, two minutes. Nothing? Too much, yeah, generally too much. Um, oh yeah, this is actually beautiful. So um, this is again me being kind of um, obsessed with cleaning stuff down. This is, the, um, this is actually the way to clean out your, um, when, when we kind of call in the CSS files, right? Look how beautiful it is. is. Just clean, ah, nicely. And this is less data. And if, remember, there's a talk on right now that's about how, um, oh, man, it's hot up here, right? Mm. So that whole thing about making your site bigger, um, and bigger and bigger and bigger, and more and more markup. If you want to have a really quick site, well, the less markup there is, the quicker it will be. Um, this is a very small little function that actually, and I actually really don't understand this. So if you come and ask me about it, I'm like, uh -uh. I stole this totally from Nathan Smith, um, who's here, by the way, he's the guy who did the whole 960 thing, and I just got my stick on his laptop, I feel pretty special. Um, but this is kind of a, it just cleans out all these 
attribute thingy and just you know, make it make it nice and make it good. Um, the thing about all all this stuff around how we're going to if we're going to think about the CSS and the new ways that we can actually do it, well, we can begin to use actually the path name to the detect on the CSS. So you don't need to have a menu ID anymore. When I look at how the menu puts out its markup, I'm like, why is there a menu ID and everything? Well, there is that because we want to be able to detect it. We can actually do that now on the path instead, which I think is pretty good. Um, but the thing is that Drupal is not really wrong. I was, I was at the shooting range with WebChick two days ago, shooting shotguns. <laughs> Holy crap, she now can shoot a shotgun and she hits stuff. <laughs> I was a very, very little boy at that point. I was like, okay. So WebChick, should we talk about some of these things I'm kind of not happy about? Cluck, cluck. No. <laughs> yeah. Mm. No, what we talked about was actually, I, I went on my usual bitch parade. Yeah, 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 no developers understand anything, blah, 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 blah. And she actually took it the other way and said, no. No front-end people had actually been in the room and told the developers what the fuck we wanted. So they just said, hey, let's give them a shit ton of diffs and a shit ton of class names and they could like do their magic with it. And now we come like five years later and I'm like, nah, that's not good enough. So this is kind of me asking like people to step up and begin to talk with the developers about it and figure it out and begin to write blog posts about it and actually begin to be vocal about it. I mean, at some point in about a day, my voice will be kind of a <coughs> go on, on, on as an old motor. Then I hope some of you guys and girls will step over. Um, so this is me and this is my project I've been on for a couple of years. It's called The Mothership. Um, and the idea behind the mothership was actually as a preloader for all your CSS, all your markup. Um, to actually clean that up because I figured out it was a bunch of hard work to do that every time. So I did that as a base theme. Um, and I'll not go into deep, deep lengths about it because it's not, it's actually really, really not sexy. I mean, it doesn't do anything pretty for your site unless you like to view source. Then it's pretty fucking hot. <laughs> but. When you are kind of on, on the stress with the client, like we just need something, I'm kind of, the, 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 the scary thing is that actually people now beginning to use this and kind of figuring out all, my, all the flaws in the code and stuff. That's, uh, so I'm, I'm actually trying to recruit people. I will buy you beers later. <laughs> no, so what I've tried to do with this is actually, as you can see here, um, this is the, 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 um, uh, the interface for the back and forth, kind of having like quick ways of getting uh, modernizer, selectivizer kind of in. Um, I did a little, uh, uh, what I call the poor themers helper. Uh, if you know the devel module and the devel theme module, you know about that, right? It kind of, how should I say it nicely? It spits out a lot of spans on your site so you cannot really work with it and your design will be messed up. Um, that was kind of a noise for me. So what I ended up actually was, uh, oh, there come a boat. See where we at. Up, but up, but up. So, uh, go away. Go here. We go. So, this is actually the rendering uh, when you load that whole poor theme helper. Because I was kind of getting tired of looking for stuff. I mean, I feel almost not as clever as Sherlock Holmes, but that kind of that is my job as a themer. It's not making stuff pretty and make it to work in a browser and stuff. It's hunting for crap and figuring it out. So I've kind of just begin to spit out all the, all the elements that should, is in this kind of, uh, in this, this note. So I very quick have access to hide and renders of the, the different elements if that's what I want to do in that theme, all my TPLs and so forth. So there's kind of like a really quick and dirty way to actually to get Drupal to tell you what it is that you want to do. You don't want to put this out at a site that has a shit ton of Ajax on it, kind of breaks. Um, and it fills a lot, so you, of course, will remove it in a, in a live site. Another thing that I'm trying to build around is that whole idea of removing class names, because that can be a kind of a pain to find them. Um, I've never understood why Drupal has that HTML class in the body tag. Anybody has an idea of why that is? Come on. Okay. Have you ever used XML? No. 
So there's no good reason to that why that class is in there, right? Nobody uses it, but it just came in at some point. So that's kind of the things I'm trying to clean up with this module, having a nice interface where you can click it off because it's not always you want to go totally naked, right? Um, so the theme can actually be found at mothership.me. It looks so cool on paper when I wrote it down. It's so difficult to, 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 to tell people. Um, yeah, mothership the, that me. You got it? He's clever, this one. <laughs> we have been lucky with this developer. No, so, so kind of back to this. This is kind of a, you know, where we are right now. So we need to actually mold Drupal a lot as front-end developers to, to get a lot of this stuff done. Um, but at the same time, so I've, I think this is actually great fun. And it sends me out on new ways. Well, it's great fun when I have time for it. When I don't have time for it, I'm, that's when my, my Twitter stream kind of explodes in, in angry things about Drupal people. I try to keep it down. Um, and, and actually, this is kind of the, 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 the idea of, of you know, how, we, how we actually, you know, how Drupal tries to think as, the, at some point we had this idea, um, we should eliminate the designer. So people got all wet in their panties over the grid based because if you have a grid, then it's designed. Or now, what's it called, the Twitter thingy? Bootstrap. Ooh, I just changed my colors in the bootstrap and I load that on top. Now my newly fresh site is done. That is not what theming is about. Theming is about having a CMS system and having a design and having that shit to work together. And that is your role and your job as a front end developer. Your role at the same time is to keep all the apes and the monkeys away from the developers, protecting them against evil browsers, dumb, pissy, annoying designers, because that is what we are. I work on both sides of that fence, and when I'm on the design line, oh man, I'm not a nice person. When I'm on the front end line, I'm Mr. Goody Goody. Um, no, so actually my, my idea was actually to make a deal with every developer in the room. So let me just hear again, how many developers do we have? Say it with your voice, goddammit. Like, uh, come on. Are you men or mice? <laughs> okay, so, so what if we make this deal that you are still allowed to do all the fun JavaScript Ajax thingy that you can impress your friends with. You can do all the database stuff that you want to do. You can put as many obscure thingies into that server database, whatever kind of van is, what the fuck do I know thingy. <laughs> you can do all that crap. We as front end developers will not interfere with that. We will keep, we will be keepers of the peace by ho having all the designers away from you, having all the project managers that comes in and want to have that stuff done in the last minute that they know we could do in the theme, we will do those evil tricks. If we do that, will you then give us the markup we asked for? That was not the, uh, come on, will you give us that? Yeah, good. Um, I had an idea of doing a mothership tomorrow after lunch. It's kind of like the wakest thing ever because tonight it's on and we need to drink and party. Eh, 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 eh. Um, so it's, I'm putting out on Twitter, so actually we'll give a more rundown and an idea of the philosophy about this whole mothership thingy and getting other pissy this front end people that are angry about markup. And we can kind of sit in our own little group and close the door and scream of everything and then come out and be nice and happy. Um, so I did a plug before for, for stuff. Um, so you should actually buy some cool shit. I have a lot of cool shit with me this time. Um, actually what I've done to kind of support the, um, the way, the work we're doing with the mothership is actually this poster. Um, I actually think this is the first post ever for a, a theme or a module, <laughs> or maybe even a Drupal site, but um, this is how I roll. So we have these up in the, up in the bookstore and um, they will only be here actually, uh, and that's how it's gonna be each time. Um, well, besides of me being all obnoxious and running around, I'm always, uh, also kind of see that that looked good, right? <laughs> so you remember this, this thing called design for Drupal? That felt all kind of like good and like designers came around here. Oh yeah, it was like a, like a whole little love fest out on an island with a bunch of hippies, right? 
um, well, we figured out, at least in the European community, there was a lot of front-end developers that actually thought we were just sitting in a corner in a circle talking about colors and topography. And then some of these guys said, okay, we, we've done so far the Europe, we did, we did Prague, and we did Berlin. Because as front-end people, we like nice shit. So we only go to really good cities. And believe me, Berlin is pretty awesome. Not as awesome as Copenhagen, but you know, everybody knows that. So the thing is that, that in a month, we are actually having the first Frontend United camp. And what we figured out that Frontend United was just a better name for this. Because it's, it's everything from the UX to the design to anything else. It's in Amsterdam. I mean, what can possibly go wrong? <laughs> it will be good. It will be good. Um, so check out frontendunited.org or .com or .net or .net. We have we got them all. Or the Twitter stream was also front end united. It's not a, it's actually just a European version of that whole design for Drupal or what it's called. Um because kind of the, the, the energy kind of went out of it and, and we just figured out we gave it a new name. Actually the reason it came became front end united was actually we had an idea of making a, for you Americans a, a soccer jersey. What we would on the other side call a football jersey. Um having a kick ass logo for that. Front end United with like UX plus da 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 all that stuff. I've heard about people who want to do a back edge United thing, and I've had a, a lot of good ideas for that shit. <laughs> we will take that later. Yeah, I'll sneak that one in, right? Okay, let's talk some resources. Um, so the mothership the dot me, my own site actually more DK. I'm very sorry that that's not up to speed with Drupal 7 right now. I've been kind of busy having a baby and all that stuff. That's been all good. Um, the display suite is, is pretty sweet. Actually, can I use .com? Do you know about that? Okay, can I use it? Basically, every time you find a new hot ass sexy tag you want to use, you go into can I use? Can I use Mark? And then it will tell you of which browsers you can actually use this stuff on. So you don't have to sit and plow around the internet and figure this shit up. These people are very keen on getting new stuff in all the time, so they're very much up to date and it's all major browsers all the time. HTML, please us. I think this, this URL is, is pretty sweet. It's another one of these, kind of like give us an overview of what can you use actually right now. How much time do I got left? Not a clue. Anybody has an idea how much time is left? Okay, we just keep going. Okay, so modernizer is another thing. Modernizer is putting a lot of class names into your stuff if you want to do that. Check it out. It's really sweet to kind of do, do um, detections on can I use shadows on this stuff? Some kind of that thing. Um, Selectivizer can save your ass on a lot of ways because it kind of like get, gets the CSS up to speed. Um, another thing now we had that whole meetup thingy. Um, I think we started just calling this out just to like um, go out a couple of us and a couple of front end people and, and have dinner. And I thought it was a good idea to invite you guys. Um, so we're going afterwards today down to the Falling Rock um, uh, tap house, which has the has like 40, 45 taps of good local beers. And for me, coming out of town, I will not complain. Um, the idea is actually just to meet up with other people who are kind of into this whole front end thingy, and um, you know, we get some time to like just hang around. And after that, we go down to the official party and find some developers and get into trouble. <laughs> so. Do we have any questions? Anyone? You just want to clap. Okay, well then, um, I think it's like that whole, um, thank you for coming for my session. Oh, there was a question. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I will post my slide very, very quick on my website, mothershipthe.me. Oh yeah, and that website too. Yeah, 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 of course. Oh yeah, that side. Oops. Do you the Ingve tag? The Ingve tag. Oh yeah, that's a very, very new Swedish tag. And um, oh man, I missed that slide. It's a new, very good Swedish tag. That's a, no, that's that's the joke is only between us. Yeah, sorry about that. That was just dumb. All right, guys. Thank you for coming. It's been a pleasure. My mouth is very dry. I'm, I'll go out and look for a beer. Um, <laughs> Come by later on and, and talk about this stuff. Um, I would really want to push this in any way possible. 
and I will not stop before Drupal is beautiful. I've been doing this shit for six years, and I see absolutely no reason to stop with the best motherfucking community in the world. So, thank you.